Hey everybody, I'm here with three of my helpers and we are going to do an unboxing and demo today of a brand new air fryer toaster oven. If you've watched my channel for a while, you know I've been on the search for the perfect air fryer for us. And um, this one probably is disqualified just based on size because we have a tiny kitchen. It's gigantic. I haven't even opened it and taken it out of the box yet, but I can see already that it is enormous. Uh, but it looked so cool that when the Kosori company contacted me and offered to send me a sample to test out, I had to say yes. And so uh, we are going to try this out, even though it probably will take up a lot of space. So first off, we're going to do a quick unboxing and go over all of the you know features and accessories that come with it. And then we're going to get it all cleaned up and test out a couple of recipes. I have some chicken wings and the girls are going to test out their three ingredient granola that they love to make and see how it works in this amazing toaster oven. So I have reviewed a couple things on my channel so far from Kosori, uh, including their pressure cooker and uh, the countertop air fryer that they have, the smaller drawer style one. And I've been impressed with the quality of their products. So I was happy when they contacted me to see if I was interested in checking this one out. Can I, uh, look, at, look at the camera and be on TV. What do people on TV say? Ah, uh, breaking news. <laughs> I love that this is stainless steel. I can already tell it's nearly all stainless steel here, which is great. A lot of air fryers are plastic. Ooh. Look at how big that is. It's about as big as a microwave. Uh, like a decent sized microwave. I want to open it up and see what it's inside. You want to look, like, you want to look at it inside? Yeah. Good night. Alright, so this is for the rotisserie. It's like a rotisserie fork for looking in and out chickens. And then next accessory, I, I'll have to look and see if this is the um, crumb catcher that goes to the bottom or if it's one of the cooking pans. We have an air fryer toaster oven uh, recipe book. Ooh, they got beef jerky in here because this also doubles as a, a dehydrator. And here is the big air fryer basket that slides in there. And then there's a rack that you can put pans on. So when you guys do your granola, you could put it on right on here, kind of like in the oven. And then we got a packet of paperwork here. This looks really cute and fancy. Look at how they like put the that. manual in there like that. That's funny. Quick reference guide. And then down here, I expect this is the crumb catching tray for the bottom of the pan. And then the last couple things in the box were just some accessories for the rotisserie, the skewer that goes through the chicken and the forks that hold the chicken in place. So one thing I'm excited about with this air fryer oven is that it has four heating elements and there's two there on the bottom and then there's two up on the top. And the reason that it's important is because you shouldn't need to flip things as much when you have uh, heat coming from both the bottom and the top. In a lot of air fryers, the heat just comes from the top, and while you have the fan that circulates the hot air, it's still, a lot of the heat is still just coming straight from the top, so you have to flip things a lot. So I think this is gonna give a lot more even cooking. So one really cool thing about this oven is that a whole uh, 13, nine by 13 inch pan can fit right in there. So I feel like this could almost replace my big oven in my kitchen. So the way everything fits in here is this is the crumb tray, and it goes on the very bottom underneath the heating element that and then we have the three other options for racks this is a food tray and it looks like it can go right in like that and then the rack that's kind of just like an oven rack that um, pans and things could sit on go in like that and of course you don't have to use all of these at once you could just choose one or two uh, and situate them the way you want and then here's the air fryer basket and it can sit just like that. So one small issue that I have with this setup, um, which is the same as I had for another air fryer oven that I reviewed a while back, is that the air fryer basket, uh, when you pull it out, if it has any oil or anything like that, it's gonna just drip as you pull it out. You're gonna have to have something to put it on right away when you pull it out of the uh, toaster oven and that's something that you don't have to worry about when you have a countertop air fryer That's one of the conveniences of it is that usually the drawer comes out with the basket 
and so it catches anything that falls and that's something that you know you really miss when you have an oven like this. There are some other accessories that you can buy um, that are kind of like baskets with feet, kind of like what you would use in an instant pot for like a steamer basket. And I might look into something like that that I could get that to put on here. So use this as my air fryer um, tray and then put a basket on top, see if that works. And there are some toaster oven air fryers on the market that have worked around this and they have uh, some kinds of things that you can pull out and that does have something underneath. So i um, kind of bummed that Kosori didn't go that direction with their air fryer basket. We'll look at the display more in depth when I get this uh, plugged in and ready to test out, but it's got a nice little screen here. Then um, let's see, this is light and Celsius and Fahrenheit, some kind of a toggle there, something for the fan, start, cancel, and then a function knob and a time temp knob. The manual said the first thing you're supposed to do before you use it is of course clean everything inside of the oven and the accessories and then put everything back in and put it on toast for seven minutes and that will just burn off any residual chemicals or any nasty stuff that might be in there. So that'll be a good test run for me. And I did read in the manual that this has heating elements on the side as well. So top, bottom, and sides, which should give it a really good even cook. Let me play with this for a minute to see how it works. All right, so I'm toggling with the function knob between all these different um, settings. There's dehydrate, ferment, warm. Look, there's a cookie setting. The kids will be so excited. Air fry, roast, bake, pizza, bagel, and then toast, which is what we're gonna do. And then um, the temp and the time toggle. Let's see what that does. All right, that's putting the time up. Putting it up to seven minutes. You can see the cute little toast icon with the dark toast and the light toast. So I don't know if you guys can tell, but the fan is not running right now. It's very, very quiet. It's silent. Um, and it says that the, in the manual, it says that the convection fan does not run on the toast or the bagel uh, functions. And then the speed is automatically set for the air fry setting and the dehydrate function. So I thought that the seven minute up there was seven minutes, but it was actually level seven. I'm looking at the manual and it says, um, turn the time temp knob to adjust the darkness level between one and seven. So that wasn't actually minutes, it was just the darkness level of my toast. And then it says time will adjust automatically with the darkness level. So in the manual, they have a really detailed page for each of the different settings and it tells you um, which heating elements turn on and what they do and then it tells you the best rack position for each of them and I think that's really, really handy. Unlike the Instant Pot, the functions, they don't, most of them don't do anything besides just a different time, like a preset time. So to have details of how <laughs> these different settings actually cook things differently is really interesting and obviously they put some, some work and some thought into uh, how well different things cook, like pizza versus other things. So I'll be interested in playing with that. So I was curious about the convection fan and the um, if it had different speeds, and I was just reading here that it does, either convection for a normal fan speed or super convection for a high fan speed, and a high fan speed can give a crisper result as is required for air frying. So that's the main difference between a convection oven and an air fry oven, it's just more of a a fan speed, you get even crispier results with an air fryer than you would with a convection oven, even though it's basically the same, the same technology. I wanted to mention that the temperature range is 80 degrees to 450 degrees, and a lot of countertop air fryers only go up to 400, so that's really great to go up to 450, and also going down to 80 is really great because um, you can use that for the dehydrate setting or the um, ferment or warm setting. And even my oven in the kitchen, it only goes down to, I think, 170, which is good for some dehydrating, but not for all. And also, if you go down as low as 80, it's good for things like um, proofing sourdough bread and stuff like that, like the ferment function. You can see the element down there is pretty red hot, as well as the ones on the top. All right, finished its toast, and now it's ready to use. 
Let's go ahead and try out some chicken wings. I'm gonna be using my normal times and temperatures that I use for chicken wings in my other air fryer, so I can compare one to one to see how this one holds up. And that is 25 minutes on 380 degrees on the air fry setting, and then bump it up to 400 degrees and do 500 more. And that is a timing that I got from a recipe from thisoldgal.com, and I'll link that recipe down below if you're interested in checking that out. I got my chicken wings ready to air fry and I was trying to figure out uh, how I was going to deal with the dripping from the chicken onto that crumb catcher down there because the heating elements are over it and I didn't think that having stuff dripping on the heating elements was a great idea. So I was looking uh, in the manual, which of course I should always do that, um, and it says here when air frying fatty foods such as chicken wings uh, use the food tray instead of the fry basket to prevent oil dripping. So um, you can't use the fry basket. Like I mentioned, that's the one de design flaw, and I guess the way they combat that is they give you the food tray to use instead. The only drawback to that is that you don't get the airflow um, because it doesn't. it's not a mesh basket. And I love how big this tray is because I can fit a lot more than in my countertop air fryer on here. I'm not putting any sauce on these wings or seasoning because uh, we usually just dunk them in buffalo sauce after they're cooked. So I'm just cooking them as is, which is how I normally do it. I forgot about the preheat that they do. So I'm gonna take the chicken back out and start it and see how the preheat goes. Let's see, air fry. I'm keep it at 25 minutes. Oh, and then that pressing the toggle knob uh, put me down to the uh, temperature, and I'm going to go down to 380. I'm going to hit start, and now it is in the preheat mode, and I don't know how long that will take. The other option here that it says in the manual is that you can hit the start cancel button, and the preheating will cancel, and the cooking will start immediately. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that since I usually don't preheat when I air fry chicken wings. So to get an accurate idea of how, uh, comparison on these chicken wings, I'll just go ahead and stick it in and let it start cooking at 380. 380 for 25 minutes and then 400 for five minutes. In my countertop air fryer, I usually shake the basket halfway through. So I am going to pull this out and see. Uh, I'll probably flip all of the chicken wings over. That's what they look like halfway through the cook time. And the oven does not stop when the door is opened on my countertop air fryer. If you take the basket out, the oven will stop and pause your cook time. 25 minutes is done. I'm gonna bump up the temperature to 400 and go um, five more minutes. We'll see if that's enough. I'm afraid it might not be. One of the magical things about air frying is having the basket and having the liquid drip down so it's not touching the meat and that dries things out and makes it crisp up faster. So when you're not able to use the air fryer basket with things like chicken wings, you kind of lose that. I think I'm gonna be able to get around it by finding some kind of basket with feet that I can use in here, but I am bummed that um, that Kosori didn't do something to combat that in this model and have an accessory that would work that way. I was thumbing through the recipe book and they have a recipe for chicken wings and they recommend 35 minute cook time at 400 degrees. So that's a good, um, let's see, that's a good five minutes more than what I typically do and with a higher temperature setting the whole time. So it looks like it's gonna take a little bit longer and a little bit higher of a temperature setting to get the same results as I normally get in my Kosori countertop air fryer. So cook time is done and they are not nearly crispy, as crispy as we typically get them in the same amount of time in our countertop air fryer. That is really actually disappointing. Uh, I'm going to put them in for another 10 minutes at 400 and see if we can't get them crisped up. Now that it's been cooking for 40 minutes, I think we're gonna have to call it good. And this is what it looks like. It still does not look as crispy as in my countertop air fryer. 
uh, but we can't cook it forever. One of the other great benefits about an air fryer is that it cooks so quickly that it retains a lot of the moisture inside. It crisps up the outside really nicely while keeping the inside nice and moist. And so the longer you have to cook it, uh, the drier, more dry it's going to get. So that's kind of a bummer if we're going to have to cook this for 10 or 15 minutes longer uh, than in our other air fryer. It's not, we're not going to get the same texture and results um, in, in, inside the chicken. The chicken is also sticking to this pan. I'm not sure what this pan is coated with. Uh, but it is sticking slightly. Levi doesn't seem to mind the chicken wings. He thinks they're delicious just like they are. Hi. Now Talia is going to try her three ingredient granola recipe and so I'm putting in the oven rack and she's got it in her pan all ready to go and we're gonna just slide it in there and cook it. We cook it for 16 minutes. Well, the pan's not hot yet, so you don't well, need to I, use that. I know, but okay. like I Well, don't touch the top of the thing with your fingers. Yeah, that'll hurt. We usually cook it for 16 minutes uh, and we stir it twice in that 16 minute time. So we'll see, um, and it's a, 350 degrees, right Del? 350? Yeah. Okay. All right girls, come over here. This granola's almost done. You need to see if it looks like your normal granola when you make it in the other air fryer. It's not. What do you it's think, good. Talia? Charity? It looks raw. It's like normal oats. It just looks like oats, right? Yeah. It's not, it's hardly crispy at all. Yeah. It just looks raw. There it is. It needs quite a lot longer in the air fryer to get it anywhere near as crispy as what the girls usually do. Another disappointment. So some final thoughts for you guys. Uh, the pros are, I love how it looks. I think it looks really sleek and nice. I love that it is uh, stainless steel on the outside instead of plastic. Also the size is great. The fact that you can fit a whole nine by 13 pan in there, you could use this almost as just a replacement to an oven. So it'd be great for someone who has like a studio apartment or something where they don't have room for a large size oven. It could totally replace an oven that way. I do like that they have the ferment and the dehydrate settings. That's something that's really cool that you're not gonna probably get with most countertop air fryers. Being able to proof bread dough in here would be wonderful. Um, and it has a lot of room, so if you did use it as a dehydrator, you could dehydrate quite a bit at one time. So that is a huge benefit. As far as using it as a replacement for an air fryer, I do not think it holds up to the countertop air fryers. The convenience of the handle and the basket, being able to just pull it out um, and shake it when you're using the countertop air fryer, you just can't get in this oven. And the fact that you can't use anything greasy in this oven with the air fryer basket is a big disappointment. So I could see this oven being perfect for certain situations, but if air frying is your main purpose in buying it, I think you're gonna be disappointed. I will continue to play with it and I will let you know if I have any updates on my opinions. And if there is something that you would love to see me make in here that you're curious about, please comment down below and I will see if I can do that. I will talk to you guys again soon. Bye.